welcome from um, from Australia and also from from Japan today. Thank you all for joining yeah. us. Thank you very much. It looks very cold there today, Masa. What's the temp? Um, it's less than ten degrees today. <gasps> wow, it's really cold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, hi Maria. Hi from Wellington. Hello, Wellington. Ah, no, that's fine, Maria. So we um, everybody's on mute. So yeah, we are going to use the chat. So thank you. Hi, Kerry. Yes. It is nice and sunny in the way to the prefecture. Absolutely. Very friendly person. All right. Well, it's 12 o'clock and uh, we've got quite a lot to get through today. So yep. I'm going to start. I might just do a little bit of housekeeping while we're waiting for a few more people to join us. Um, mm -hmm. So we're doing this in webinar mode. It is being recorded. Everybody will be on mute. The only people you can see uh, will be Massa and I and whoever Massa is filming. Um, if you do need to leave early, like I said, we're recording it. We'll send everybody a copy of the recording. However, we do want you to join us for the entire time if you can um, spare the time to do so. At 12.45 Australia time, we're going to be drawing two lucky winners of our $100 voucher to your favourite local Japanese yeah. restaurant. And um, I'll contact you after the webinar and, and get your details and find out which restaurant that is. So let's jump on. Oh, I do um, would love you to use the chat. So if you've got any questions, I'll be keeping an eye on that. And um, we would like this to be an interactive session. After the uh, prize draw, we will stay online for a 15 minute Q&A. So, I'm based in Australia. Masa is in Beppu in Oita. So if you have yes. any questions whatsoever, not just about Oita, but traveling to Japan, stay online mm. and, um, and Masa will be able to answer those for you. Yes. Let's get started. So today we are delving deeper into Oita Prefecture. As an introduction, um, then we are going to, we've got three live crosses today. So it's a bit ambitious. I'm hoping it will all work well, but we have three really fabulous locations that we wanted to share with you. And in between that, so Mass is going to then jump in his car from the first location and drive to the next one. I'm going to talk you through some of the most frequently asked questions. So we attended in Sydney, Massa and I, the Japan Travel Fair. And over one weekend, there were seven and a half thousand people that came through the doors. And so we've gathered most frequently asked questions from that. And then also from the roadshow that we did recently in Auckland, Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne. And we've put them into a presentation so that if you ever get asked these questions from your clients, you'll be armed with the answers. So let's go straight across to Massa. And he's going to explain what this image is. Hello, everyone. I'm Massa. And I'm working for a local uh, DMC, Triple Three Plus in Oita Prefecture. And I'm based in Beppe. Um, and I'm also a um, Oita Prefectural Strategic, I can't say this word, Strategic Partner, <laughs> whatever. And I'm in the center of Beppu Onsen, the biggest hot spring resort, um, hot spring town in Japan. As you can see, uh, all these geothermal steam shooting up from the ground, they're all natural. And you can see the power of the ground. And then I'm gonna go, yeah and take you to one of the most interesting um, hot spring facility called 
Simba. Rebecca, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah? Okay. Oh, I can see all the questions coming up, but I can't really see the, the whole question. Uh, yeah, so I'll answer can... them. Um, a lot of them I'll answer <laughs> as I go through the presentation, Massa. Uh, okay, one of them okay. is, does it smell like Rotorua? No, no, it doesn't. It just smells nice and sweet. <laughs> so if I change the view like this, yeah, uh, sorry. You can see all the steam shooting up from the ground. Yes. Okay. So, so like whole area, this area in Beppu is called Kanawa District. And like it just, it's just everywhere is like that. Um, all the steam shooting up from everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to like be a really nice walk for you. Um, just like it takes about like half an hour to an hour to explore this area. Yes. And then he's the guy, uh, he's the uh, monk called um, Ippen Shonin. And he was like, you know, uh, touring around um, uh, whole Japan 800 years ago. Um, like, you know, uh, giving, uh, it's, do you say like a missionary? <laughs> yeah, kind of yes. thing. And yes, and then like he uh, visited Beppu and the local people in Beppu were kind of suffering from all the, you know, really rough hells, you know, that there are seven hells of Beppu and Lerica, I think it's, she's going to, uh, you're going to explain the details later. Uh, and then he pre prayed to calm them all down and it, it worked. So <laughs> local people really admire him. Yeah. And then he created, uh, not created, started and Kanawa Onsen in this district, yeah. He opened up this district for all the people who want to like cure their muscle pain, you know, like all the um, illness and physical um, health conditions. Yeah. And this used to be the original um, steam bath. It's not still preserved, but not in use anymore. And you can see this code. So how do you call them, Rebecca? They're yeah, crutches. Crutches, so if yeah. you've got uh, yeah, a broken foot, that's what you use. Yes, and then like people used to come here with all the muscle pains and uh, muscle aches uh, with that. And they just, after they used the steam bath, they totally forgot that they, they had muscle ache. Yeah, so they all, all of them left these uh, things there. Yeah, and because they felt really fine and just like, you know, completely okay to walk without them. <laughs> so that, that proves this steam bath really works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and then they moved the steam bath to the new building, but still look, the traditional looking. Can you see this? It's the it's steam bath. Can. Yeah. Great, great, great. Oh, sorry. My CV started working. Um, so... And um, nowadays they separate uh, men, uh, male and female. Yeah. What are you going to do is uh, like the photo um, Rebecca showed you, um, you basically lie down on really nice curves. Yeah. And then it's just wearing casual kimono called yukata. You just lie, uh, lie down on a really like kind, kind of like really like, nice smell. Um, uh, <laughs> Herbs, yeah. So it's just cold. <laughs> uh, yes, and then like you just like lie down there for eight to ten minutes, and it feels amazing after like eight to ten minutes. Yeah, um, like you're completely your blood circulations. Um, how do you say? Um, much better. Yeah, and then you feel amazing afterwards. Yeah. So, uh, and I wish I could show you the inside, but today because it's um already running, there are a lot of people inside, so I can't really uh, show you the uh, inside the facility, but I'm sure Rebecca can show you the photo, okay? And it's, uh, the entrance fee is 800 yen, yeah? And then you can, um, there's a Yukata rental service as well, so don't worry, even if you don't have Yukata uh, casual kimono, yeah, you can still enjoy the steam bath, yes. And there's one more thing I wanted to share with you, is this. Foot steam bath, yeah, uh, which is actually free of charge. Yes. So um, if you don't have enough time to go in to the actual steam bath, you can still steam your feet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to just show you how you can use this facility. So basically, okay, this is the steam bath. 
upside like steam uh for steam yeah and oop, 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 sorry i'm just trying to use this yeah you can open up this lid yeah and then put your feet in the steam oop, 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 like this yeah and then just like wait like just um you stay here for like five ten minutes and i sometimes come here and just like stay here for 15 minutes to 30 minutes just reading a book yeah <laughs> soaking my feet into steam yeah and so yeah um in beppu the beppu is as i told you is the capital of onsen hot spring and yeah, not only um just bathing in water but also you can just experience like unique unique type of hot spring experience yeah for example the steam bath and there's mud bath and also sand bath as well and then you can even use those steam shooting up from the ground to cook food as well yeah so if you love hot spring if you want to relax this is the best place to come and visit yeah that's it from me rebecca <laughs> thanks nasa thank you so, so i'm gonna move now Mas is going to jump in his car and drive to one of Beppu's seven hills. It's about a 15-minute drive. So we're going to start going through some of the most frequently asked questions. First, this is what the inside of the steam bath looked like. So we didn't get to see it today because there were people in there. And if your clients do go in, that's what they'll be able to see. So the first question, uh, easily the most popular one, is where is Guita Prefecture? And it is on the island of Kyushu. It's on the northeastern part of the island, so right next door to Fukuoka. The entire population of this region has about 1.1 million people. So vastly different to the heavily populated cities as, as Tokyo and, and Osaka. So offering a very different experience. The entire region is about 100 kilometres north, south and east to west. So nothing is ever too far away. The next most frequently asked question is, how do I get there from Tokyo? It's really easy and there are lots of different ways to get there. So if your clients are flying from Tokyo, there are more than 12 flights each day into Oita Airport. One thing to be aware of though if your clients are flying in is that the airport itself is not close to Oita City um, or Beppu. So the two most popular places to visit are Beppu and Yusuin. So if your clients are flying in and they can fly in from Tokyo, from Osaka and Nagoya, it's a 45-minute shuttle and there are frequent shuttles, so it's easy to get to Beppu or 55 minutes if they're going to Yuthuin. So easy to get to. It's just something that to be aware of. If your clients are travelling via rail, so the black line that you can see on this map is the Shinkansen. So that's the bullet train that takes you all the way from the top of Japan right down to Kagoshima down the bottom. So that black line on the island of Kyushu is the bullet train. So to get to Oita from, um, on the bullet train, you need to actually get off and take a regional um, the regional train. So if you are traveling from Tokyo, it's six and a half hour journey to get to Beppu. Not something I'd uh, recommend in one go. Best thing would be uh, if your clients are traveling via rail is, is take a slow route to go down and enjoy it. And then once they're in Kyushu, they can just fly back to Tokyo. So that's a really easy thing to do. Uh, one of the questions we got was, how do you get there from Hiroshima? So you can take the bullet train. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. Um, down to Hakata Station or Kukuru. So it gets to Kukuru or Hakata. They're both in, in Fukuoka and they're on the bullet train line. And then you get the overland train. So one of the options is a Yufuin no Mori. And this is a tourist train. So 
from the moment you step on board, you feel like you're in a resort. And that's that beautiful wooden interior that you can see in the image. And then this train has really beautiful, large panoramic windows. So great for viewing. It's, um, it's a really beautiful way to travel between Booker Walker and that stops at Yufuin and also to Beppu as well. So this, the black and white lines that you can see on this map of Oita shows the rail network. And you can see it's quite an extensive rail network across the region. So if your clients are traveling via JR, if they've got one of those passes, they are applicable in Kyushu as well. There are no extra costs to take the youthful in memory. One thing to be aware of is that you do have to book it in advance. And something new, which a lot of people have been interested in at the Japan Travel Fair, is from Beppu. And Osaka, there is an overnight ferry that operates in each direction. So if your clients are in Osaka, um, this is a really nice way of something different to get to Oita Prefecture. And it takes you right into the heart of Beppu. And so this is the ferry. It's called the Sunflower. And Kerry, I noticed that you said how is the best way to book this ferry. So they do have a website that's in English that you can use. And I will need to check with Massa in terms of um, DMCs can also book it or you can go through your wholesaler and then they can book it for you. Uh, I think more similar to, say, the spirit of Tasmania um, and uh, cars can go on board, lots of different type of accommodation. So the one that you can see there is the most luxurious and it's one of the suites. And then there's also an onsen on board as well. Going to quickly, Carrie, I want to go on that. Um, had to, oh, Karen, that's wonderful. I had two clients arriving in Beppu yesterday from Hiroshima and they are loving it. Oh, that's really brilliant, Divya. Brilliant, Divya. Um, um, Rebecca? Um, yes, Martha? Yeah, that black um, chat box is actually blocking the presentation. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, the next most common question is what is so special about Oita Prefecture? And Massa has already touched on this before. So it's onsen is the number one thing. So it's a wellness and relaxation destination. Um, there are more onsen in Oita Prefecture than anywhere else in Japan. And in the city of Beppu, where Massa is at the moment, there are over 2,000 onsen. So that is one of the key highlights. The second is the nature. It is really beautiful. So it's between the Seto Inland Sea and then these stunning mountain ranges, which they call the backbone of um, Kyushu. The next is the culture and the history. So the locals are really proud of their traditions and they work hard to keep them alive. So you'll see the ancient crafts such as pottery making, which you can see in the picture, um, bamboo, craft and um, they're being kept alive today because of just how proud they are of them, these traditions and cuisine this is a rich agricultural region so amazing wagyu beef if you enjoy beef but also because it's on the sea so incredible uh, seafood as well now this fifth highlight I've actually added recently um because Every time somebody talks about Oita, someone that has been there before, one of the most popular things they comment on is just how friendly the locals are, how welcoming they are, how um, they're willing to give their time to interact with visitors. So if you have clients that are looking to connect with locals, then Oita is definitely somewhere where you should be sending them. The two key places to visit when your clients are coming to Oita. So one is Beppu, where Massa is today. And this picture on the bottom left, this is actually onsen steam that is rising across the city. So I only use that image uh, when I'm talking about it, because if you just see it like that, some people might think, hmm, looks a bit industrial. But this is all natural steam. And then you to win. It's a stark contrast. So it's a nice, relaxed, tranquil, resort town 
you can walk around the whole town in a couple of hours but it's just really beautiful and it has the most amazing views of Mount Yufu from wherever you are in the town. So I'm going to show you a quick video now um, just so you can see some of the highlights. Where the video stops is where Matter is going to be live streaming next. But I think it's still a little, a few minutes away, Matter, is that right? So we're going to jump in. When is the best time to visit? So in winter, uh, it does get very chilly. So it can be as low as minus seven. The average temperature is about six degrees. It, it's really beautiful because you have the geothermal waters, so these warm waters and the cold air, which has this mist that's rising across it. So very scenic. Um, it's good if you're wanting to spend longer in the outdoor onsen because when you have the snow falling outside and you're sitting in this beautiful warm onsen, it's just gorgeous. It does actually snow in winter and there are snow fields. But I don't mention them and or don't promote them because when Australians and Kiwis, when we think of Japan, we think of that really beautiful soft powder. Um, but Wita doesn't have that. So not as a ski destination, but beautiful still just to experience the snow. In spring, spring is a really beautiful time to visit Wita Prefecture. And in Kyushu, the cherry blossoms arrive earlier than what they do in the um, northern parts of Japan. So they start in the south and then they make their way up north. In addition to the cherry blossoms, in May, the, we have the Mount Kyushu, which is just carpeted in pink, which is these really beautiful azalea flowers. Now, if your clients are in Beppu in spring, they also have an onsen festival. So that's not as well known, but it's something that's really interesting and your clients would certainly enjoy. Uh, it's also a great time to hike because it's not too hot, it's not too cold. In summer, so it does get hot and there is you do have the rainy season. So if you're looking for the best time, I, I wouldn't say that this is the best time to visit, but if your clients don't have any other time available, then it's about planning their itinerary around that. So there are certain parts like the Kyushu Plateau so it's up higher, so it's cooler. And um, so your clients can still enjoy the great outdoors without being too hot. Just be aware it is humid. Or you can plan more indoor activities so they can go and enjoy um, the different pottery areas of Oita Prefecture. Um, they can even do hand-on pottery classes if they like. Or in um, Usuki, they have the stone Buddhas. So these are in caves and you can walk around and experience that. But I would just say, if traveling in summer, take an umbrella. And autumn. So for me personally, this is just my favorite time of year to visit Japan. So I was there at the end of November last year. So it starts um, October, late October, early November, the leaves start to change color. And then by the end of November, even early into December, you have this beautiful red and golden leaves that have just carpeted the ground. So it's absolutely stunning. And I think more so than cherry blossom seasons, you have a bit longer, you have six weeks and sometimes even longer to really enjoy these stunning colours. And they're really everywhere across the prefecture. There are certainly some areas um, 
that little gardens that just everywhere you look, they have these amazing colours and this vast um, difference in colours as well from the yellows and oranges right through these vibrant reds. But really across the entire region in autumn, it's just stunning. So another popular question that I've received is, can I wear my swimmers in the hot spring? So this picture that you can see down the bottom, which has no bathing suits, this was introduced across the onsen in Oita when they were hosting the Rugby World Cup. They had a huge influx of visitors that didn't know the rules. So the answer is, no, you can't. And when I was at the Japan Travel Fair, I was just encouraging people who were really nervous just to give it a go. Um, and it's really invigorating, actually, when you do it and you realise no one cares and, uh, and it's just so relaxing. However, if you have clients that really don't want to try it, then there are private onsen. So it's their own room. Nobody else sees them. There are also some hotels that have a pool that uses onsen water. And within that pool, um, you can wear your swimmers. That's also nice if you're a group or if you're a couple and you can enjoy that experience together. Because for the most part, the onsen agenda um, segregated. So you can't go in there together. It's going to bring up the chat. So apologies if it blocks. Uh, autumn is such a beautiful time to visit. Yeah, it certainly is. Here at Umijigoku, the sea helm. Yeah. Can you see the blue and kind of green massive pond behind me? Yeah, wow. Can you see this? It's like 100% natural spring pond. Yeah, the temperature is 98 degrees Celsius. It's really hot and it's surrounded by beautiful nature like this. And then you can see you got like really nice um, free gate down there as well. And it's onsen hot spring shrine. <laughs> yeah. So if you come here, maybe a lot of people want to do hell tour. But if you don't have enough time to do, like, you know, go and visit all seven hell, I would at least um, recommend you to include this hell. Yeah. Because it's the main one. It's really big. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to give you Onsen Hot Spring Hell Quiz. Okay. So how deep do you think this pond is? How deep do you think this Hot Spring Pond Hell is? Yeah. Just type it a, in the chat. Yeah, type in the chat. Option A, two meters. Option B, 20 meters. And option C, 200 meters. Okay. Please so Samuel's type your saying 50 meters. Kama's 20. Uh, 50, <laughs> 20. 20. 20. We've got a 200 meter. Okay. All so, right. Oh, so a lot of guesses for 200 everyone. meters. Oh, 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 really? Okay. So I'll give you the answer. The answer is 200 meters. Yay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's actually really deep. It doesn't look that deep, but you know, um, it's connected to the, uh, like, you know, the really deep underground hot spring salt. Yeah. So 1,200 years ago, when Mount Suruni, the nearest volcano erupted, this hell emerged. Yeah. So it's like, it's got like more than 1,000 years of history. Yay. And then like, you know, and this is the main one, but uh, there's another one, which is red. So I'm going to go and show you that one. And I'm, I'll be in like two minutes or something. Yeah. Okay. So, Massa, can you, you tell thank, us? Thank you, everyone, walking... for answering the answer. Pardon? Can you tell us when you're walking yeah. along how easy is it to get to this hell on public transport yeah. or from the city? Ah, okay. Um, actually, there's a, a direct bus from Bethesda Station, which is the center of Beth City. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes. 
and there's a tourist information sensor at BEP station who, and then they all, all speak English. So it's really easy to uh, find which bus to take and like, you know, how you can settle the payment and stuff like that. It's pretty easy to get um, up here from BEP station. And can you see there is some uh, plum blossoms? Yes, down there. It's the best um, time of the year to see plum blossoms. So from the end of um, February to the middle of March. Yeah, so this hell is surrounded by like a beautiful Japanese garden. So not only the hell, but also you can enjoy the um, Japanese garden view. Yeah. Uh, there was a shopping, uh, sorry, the souvenir shop as well. If you were willing to buy good uh, local souvenir, this is a really good place as well. As well. And yeah, as I told you, there are seven hells in Beppe. Yeah, this is the biggest one called Sea Hell, Umi Jigoku. Yeah, so maybe you can see that it's really popular. <laughs> Um, um, so while you're walking and um, and we can see people yeah. in the background, um, I might just explain um, that masks are very much worn in Japan. Yes, still. please. That would be great. And, yeah. and everywhere. So even outside, they're not compulsory, but you will notice that people in the background are still wearing them everywhere. So we did a test yesterday and Masa had his mask on. But because we're not used to it, um, I said, Masa, please, just for this, can you take your mask off? Rebecca, there's a good news. So oh, yes, from the thirteenth, yeah, from the thirteenth uh, of March, mask is not compulsory anymore. Yay! <laughs> and do you do you think um, locals will stop wearing masks? Uh, I don't know. I, that that that's interesting to see. <laughs> yeah. Will you Hopefully. stop wearing them? I think um, most of the time, yes, because you know it's just really hard always wearing masks all the time. Some people feel more comfortable wearing masks, so yeah, it depends. Yeah. But you know, at least it's not compulsory anymore. So yeah, that's the good news. And but I arrived got, at another hell. Yes, behind me is also in the same facility, but completely different color. Yeah, it's red. <laughs> So yes, um, actually the water itself is transparent, but this, the color of the soil, yeah, is red. That's why it looks like, you know, this, really red. Yeah. So if you come to Umijigoku Sea Hell, you can uh, enjoy not only the blue, really famous hell, but also this red hell as well. And there's also like um, foot bath down there. Yeah. So you can easily spend like more than an hour here, only in this facility. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, everyone. Red hell looks good. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it, the temperature is about like 80 degrees. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. My series Thanks, sometimes Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, you're so heading down to the Jikoku yeah. Onsen Museum? Yes, Jikoku Onsen Museum. Um, which is the, um, the new facility opened up last December. Yes. And okay. that's a I couple minutes soon, walk, yeah. so I'm going to jump straight back to the presentation and continue going through. Yes, that. please. See you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. So back to the rules of onsen. You do have to be naked. Uh, encourage people to give it a go, but then if they really um, feel uncomfortable, then use a private onsen. So these are the different onsen areas across Oita Prefecture. And there are just so many different ones. So uh, regardless of where they are, there's always um, amazing onsen that they can experience and lots of different types as well. Uh, Rebecca, sorry, just, just for one second. Just for one second. So and behind me is the plum blossom. Oh, sorry, Massa, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, go. Yeah, can you see me? Yes. Uh, you can? Yeah. We can see you, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So these are plum blossom trees. They are blooming everywhere. Yes. So like those who think it's a little bit early for cherry blossom, don't worry, you can still enjoy the plum blossom. Yeah. Everywhere. That's it from me. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to let you know that. 
Thanks, Vasa. See you soon. Okay, back to our onsen and whether they're sashu friendly. So the answer is that many are, but not all of them. So it's something to be aware of if your clients do have tattoos. In Beppu alone, there are over, um, sorry, back, over 100 different onsen that they can choose from. And there are hundreds more across the region. There is always the option of a private onsen. So if, they, if your clients have two tattoos, um, because nobody will see them in a private onsen, and smaller tattoos can also just be covered up with a patch so that you can go and make use of the public ones. We actually have a website that's entirely dedicated to onsen and you can do a search for tattoo friendly onsen. Other experiences your clients might like while they're in Beppu. So Matha mentioned before the mud bath. These are amazing. Uh, one thing to note though is that if you can see this picture down the bottom, you can see that the mud bars, and there's a tiny bamboo fence, and that's the fence that separates the men and the women. So if your clients are a bit worried about being naked in front of the opposite sex, probably not ideal. But what these mud baths do is you scoop them out of the bottom and you rub it on your skin. It's like exfoliating. And um, it just really smooths the skin out. It's just an amazing feeling. Something you may know if clients have been to Beppu before is we have these sand baths, which the sand is geothermally heated. So it's really beautiful, about 42 degrees. And one of these venues is on the beach. And um, so you're lying there, they cover you over and you're listening to the waves. Now, this venue is actually getting renovated at the moment. So there are other options inside but this one's going to be closed for about 12 months. So in 12 months time, or whenever it reopens, we'll let you know, and it's going to be this amazing new facility. Another question, we want to escape the cities. Where can we go to? Well, there are so many beautiful places. One in the top right, this is the Punisaki Peninsula, which is just so gorgeous. Think ancient forests with towering trees. It's very spiritual as well. So there are in this region, there's 35, I think, different temples. Um, but just we went there and just standing in front of one of the temples amongst these hundred-year-old trees. It just gives you goosebumps. So it's just really beautiful. And the top left is where um there's a disused rail um train track which has been converted into a cycle track. So that's really beautiful as well. And then if we go further down south to the Kuju area, it's a national park and there are so many different types of hikes. So if your clients love walking um, from a wheelchair accessible loop, which is about two kilometers, right through to overnight hikes, this is a really fabulous region to send them. Another question, where foodies, what have you got for us? So, so many amazing things. Like I said before, Wagyu beef um, is amazing in this region. That There's a picture of Massa in Saiki. So they have the most incredible range of seafood in their local markets. And the quality, they say, is like into Michelin star restaurants that you would get in Tokyo. Just so much cheaper. Uh, Tori Ten, which is a... Um, a tempura fried chicken is one of the specialties in the region and also shiitake mushrooms. So they're a large producer. They have the store at forests in the north and there's even an experience where you can almost, it's like foraging. You can go and choose your own mushroom and then cook it for you. And as I mentioned before, we have the onsen, mushi, which is the cooking using the onsen steam. So when your clients are in Beppu, they absolutely have to try that. Another question is, will there always be someone who speaks English? The answer is no, not everywhere. So Beppu has an international university. So English is widely spoken in Beppu and also Yushuin. Um, in the other regions, not so much so. So if you have clients that are a little bit nervous, they want to be able to communicate in English wherever they go then it would be best for them to join a tour to experience this part of Japan. However, 
for many people, the challenge is communicating with people using other means than, than language. And Oita Prefecture, when I was at the Japan Travel Fair, a lady came up and said, look, I was in Kitsuki, which is one of the little towns, and I was lost and it was on dark and I was getting a bit worried. And someone came up to me and helped me. Um, she couldn't speak, but somehow found out where she needed to go and actually walked her to her accommodation. So that's one of her um, finest memories of, of the Waita Prefecture. Just an example of just how friendly and helpful the locals are, even though they may not speak the same language. So Massa, can we jump to you? Are you nice and close? Hello. Can you see me? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Vanessa, I'm just yes, going sorry. to ask, um, the red one, the red mm -hmm. um, hill is actually not very deep. I think it's only... 10 uh, meters left? yes it's a yeah yeah something like that it's not that deep to be honest yeah so uh did you already explain about all seven hills uh the onsen um hills no that's over to you and uh, i mean like the seven different hills yeah so uh five of them are all located in the same area in kanawa region so it's they're all walkable uh, and two are located a little bit far away so you have to take a bus takes about 10 minutes from Kanna area to those two hells. Yeah. Hello. And I'm just waiting uh, to go inside the um, Onsen Museum <laughs> because you can only enter the museum, the inside the museum every 10 minutes. And the next one is 50, um, 10.50 Japan time. So I've got to wait seven minutes. So yeah, if, if you have any questions um, coming into like about Oita or about Beppu, you know, I, I'll be able to answer. Um, in Vanessa, the, in the I, next might jump in, I might jump back and do our itineraries and then you just sing out when you're ready. Okay, perfect. In five minutes, I'll be ready. Okay. They'll be ready. <laughs> Bye. So let's, uh, I put together three example itineraries that I think your clients will enjoy based on what they're looking for. So this picture, um, I'm on the left-hand side. We took a Famil uh, to Oita, and the first itinerary is very similar to the route that we took. And this is Kitsuki Castle Town, and you can get dressed up in kimono. It's a little bit like um, Kyoto, except hardly any tourists. So you feel very special, and it's a really beautiful town. So for a high-end um, clients, we would be flying into Oita Airport. And then we can start with a private Kunisaki day tour. So the reason you would do a private tour is because it's hard to get around using public transport in this area. Um, so you do need that. Then uh, you would start with Kitsuki Castle Town, which is the picture that you saw. And you get dressed up in kimono, which is a really fun experience. Then you go further into the peninsula to Futagoji Temple. And this temple, it's, it's surrounded by these huge towering trees and it's really beautiful. And the monk there speaks English, so he can be able to give you an introduction or, or communicate and tell you his history, which was fascinating. And then after that, we actually went further into the peninsula, into the middle, to another temple, and we had a fire stick ceremony. So they can be arranged for any number of people from two the maximum they have there is about 50, but that was a really nice experience. And then at the end of the day, we come back and we stay at the ANA Intercontinental um, Hotel and Resort in Beppu. So this would be one of the nicest accommodations that we have in Beppu. It's really beautiful. And then I've said I, in this itinerary, I spent two nights there because the picture that you see in the top left is the onsen and it's just so stunning but the whole facility is beautiful you need your clients to be able to have the time to relax and enjoy that and then the second day they can do a health tour they can try a steam bath that massa showed you or jikoku mushi for lunch now on the third day they can travel to yufui so that really beautiful um village that i spoke about before they can roam the streets explore the galleries and the cafes. The more active travellers can hike Mount Yufu. And just in less active can enjoy views from the town. 
And then I've just put in the link to one of the accommodation sites that we recommend. So this is really beautiful. Um, it also, unlike a lot of the other Ryokans, this one has Western style beds as well. So a lot of the other ones have that touch you the mattresses on the ground, even though they're quite substantial mattresses, they're still on the ground, whereas this one has Western style beds. The second example is because the accommodation we have chosen is nice and close to the train station. It's a rail journey from Hirokyushu. So we're coming in from Fukuoka. So from Hiroshima, we're coming down Hirokyushu. We're taking the train across the top of Oita and we're going to Beppu. The accommodation is that pool that you can see. So this onsen pool has amazing views of the entire region. And then it's a three minute walk from the station. Then we, the next day we go to Yufuin and we take the tourist train, the Yufuin no Mori. And then we stay in Oharu Ryokan, which is a really beautiful Ryokan. And that's that second image with the private onsen bar that they have. Explore Yufuin. The following day, so this is a bit more of an active itinerary. We go to Ume Hibiki, which is that image on the bottom left. It's a really beautiful high-end Ryokan, but very great value for money. It's 25 minutes from the train station, but they do offer a shuttle. So that's why I've included that with that rail journey. And Hita has an old town as well, Mameda, which you can go and explore from foot. So you can walk from the station. Um, they have lots of lockers. All the stations um, across week, they will have lockers for your luggage storage. And you can even hire a bike. I think it's about $3 a day to hire um, a, a bike and explore these parts. Hello, Rebecca. Are you ready, Massa? Yes, I am. Hi. Can you spotlight me, maybe? Yeah, you're spotlighted. Yeah, perfect. So I came down this um, slope from the Umijigo, from Umijigoku to see how. It took, uh, took me about like five minutes. Yeah, so it's like an easy walk. Yeah, and you can like get some snacks on the way as well. So from now on, I'm going inside the new facility called the Onsen Museum, the Hell Museum here. And this is like a brand new facility. It was uh, it opened in December 2022. And then it just I would recommend you to include this facility in the beginning of your like trip to Beppu. Then you uh, can get like a really deep understanding of like the secret of Onsen uh in Beppe. yeah okay so let's go inside and we're going to like change the camera to the front camera so that you can see it better hello he's my friend enjoji kun hello enjoji kun how are you i'm fine good yes okay can i go inside thank you so i'm just taking my mask off because i'm live streaming um okay am i ready two one, go, I'm allowed. Can I? I still have to wait. Uh, <laughs> maybe some people are still inside. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm going in, yay. So the good thing about this uh, museum is that like all the, you know, um, informations are written in English as well. It is in the first section. Yeah, you watch the video and you can see like, clearly like everything is written in English as well, yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna just go to the next session. Section, I mean. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Can you see? Yes. So what is this representing? Yeah, so, like, so what are these red curtains? Yeah. So basically, like, you know, um, this is you, you, you kind of like you're touring the same journey as onsen water. So like this um, section is all about like you, I mean, onsen water being underground. And uh, it takes about 50 years since uh, raindrops and that water is absorbed into the soil 
to um, actually that water gushes out as onsen water in Beppu. It takes 50 years. Yeah, it's amazing. So like um, you can go into the onsen in Beppu nowadays, but the water itself is from like 1960s, which is wow. quite interesting. Yes. And they were the salt lines, <laughs> those black and white lines. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. I just, I just missed that. Yeah, that was a fault line. Oh, okay. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can take a photo there. And my next is my favorite section. Let's go. Oh, I, I kind of lost. Which way should I go? Oh, this way. Okay. Let me see. Okay, all the information. And here is the. Sorry. Let me just give me, give me one second. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, sorry. It was okay. Yeah. And the section, my favorite section, a lot of mirrors. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Hello. Hi, Mesa. <laughs> yeah, so this section, the concept is that yeah, you're underwater. Yeah, before you gushes out as hot spring water. Yes. Mm. And at the end of the journey, you can learn about the different types of onsen in Beppu. There, in total, 10 types of, of like onsen water exist in the world, and 9 out of 10 exist in Beppu, which is remarkable. Yeah. And you can learn everything about like the secret of hot spring in Beppu. Why there's so much water, hot spring water um, in Beppu, that kind of thing you can learn in this section. Yes. So at the end of this journey, um, so uh, at the end of the journey, yeah, in this museum, you uh, watch the film, which takes about 10 minutes, and learn about the secret of onsen in Beppu. Yes. Massa, do I have time to go through my one final itinerary while you're waiting? Yes, yes, yes. You, certainly. Okay, See you soon. So I... So the final itinerary that I wanted to go through was self-drive. Now, self-drive is actually really easy in Kyushu because it's rural. So it's not like driving in a busy city. Um, they drive on the same side of the road and the road signs are all in English, so particularly the main ones. So it is very easy to drive and certainly for people who um, are comfortable, then some, I'd recommend it because you can get to areas that are otherwise hard to um, experience. So for this self-drive itinerary, we're coming from Fukuoka. So if you fly into Fukuoka and you can hire a car from there, and then drive to Onta Pottery Village. So this is 25 Sorry. minutes from Kika. Ah, oh, are we going back to you, Massa? Yes. Can you see this? Yeah. So after like the video was shown, the screen just rolls up. And what you can see is amazing steam and the scenery of Beppu. Yes. Okay. So, um, just, just a quick information. I live here. I'm a local person in Beppu and I go to onsen every day. So, the onsen here in Beppu is not only for tourists, but like the locals enjoy onsen as well. <laughs> yeah. And this is the, the end of my live streaming from Beppu. Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks, Massa. Did you enjoy? <laughs> yes. I thought it was wonderful. So there, lot... <laughs> so there, there are a lot more to discover, but just, uh, yeah, today we, we just had like a, a few minutes. So yeah, um, I just, you know, want, uh, wanted to you to understand the um, secret and the uniqueness of Beppu. And then I would like you to send your customers here. And I'm a local and, you know, I, I speak English, whatever. Uh, something like that. So, like, I, I'm always more than happy to uh, welcome your guests. Yeah, looking forward so to your, Massa, your visit as well. Maria has discovered yeah. the secret of why uh, locals are so friendly in Beppu because of the onsen. Yeah. Their daily onsen. Yes. 
Yes, yes. And then like in daily onsen, like you talk to locals, like other people, you know, so like people who share the same onsen are really kind of like all families. Yeah. So We're it's a great family. place to um, go and intro. So if you, if you do want to interact yeah, absolutely. with local, going to the local yeah. onsen is a great um, experience. Yes, especially for repeaters. Yeah, to Japan. Uh, thanks for your comment. Japan. Very yes. sad that this is, was... it's, it's a fabulous <laughs> webinar. Um, Matthew, yes. you're going to stay on the line. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish okay. going through my final itinerary and then we will Perfect. wrap it up with a QA. and a So we have gone a little over. Okay. Um, Perfect. But uh, we'll stay on for another 15 minutes after we finalize, uh, go through the final itinerary mm -hmm. and to answer any further questions All right. that you have. Okay, perfect. Just sharing my screen. Okay. So as I said, self-drive allows you to go deeper into places that you wouldn't be able to experience otherwise. And onto Pottery Village, it's this beautiful little village 25 minutes from Hita basically in the middle of nowhere and that's the image that you can see the first two images on the left hand side and there are nine families and they make pottery using the traditional methods so everything that they do is sustainable and there's nine kilns or nine um, pottery wheels and that gets passed down from the father to the son and their pottery is really beautiful and uh, when I was there, I visited this little village and just fell in love with it. And I bought one of their um, mugs home. And so I have a coffee in there every single day, but it just tastes so much nicer, I think. Uh, then we drive further into Yufuin. And I put here, stay in Yufuin two nights so that you don't feel like you're moving, um, checking out and checking in every single day. And then from Yufuin, do a day to a Tebepu on day two. So you know everything there is to be, or a lot of the things to do in Beppu. Go back to Yufuin, and then the next day, drive south to Taketa Castle Town. Now, just outside Taketa, it's, um, there is a, a outdoor amphitheater that was built by Drum Tower. So Drum Tower is a Japanese drumming group, and they perform all over the world. Like, it's amazing. And they have performances throughout the year you can go and book it online and see all, all their performances at two o'clock um, every afternoon when they are in season and you can go and watch them perform. And it just has amazing views. And um, I've just added pizza because about five minute drive from here, there's a Kyushu winery and it has award winning wines that even for Australians, um, the Japanese wine, I really enjoyed it. And um, so I definitely would recommend trying their wine but then wood fire pizza so if you want something a little bit different I'd encourage you to visit that on the right hand side is the Nagayu onsen so Massa said there are so many different types of onsen in Wita this one is carbonated so it's like putting your hand or your whole body into a big warm bar of mineral water and then for accommodation We've got glamping, so it's something a little bit different at the Kyushu Flower Park. So this flower park is really beautiful to experience um, in spring and autumn, but then you can actually stay overnight and you can explore the flower park when all the other tourists are no longer there. And then finally, the Yamanami Highway. So this is being recognised as one of the most Japan's most scenic drives. Now it's called a highway but it's more of a country road than a highway. And that is the route that takes you to Mount Aso, which is in Kumamoto. So we're coming from Fukuoka, going through Oita, and then coming back to the west of Kyushu to finish with. And that's my third itinerary. So just jumping forward, one more. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you really enjoyed the presentation and I'm jumping back to Massa and I. And if you've got any questions, please pop them through on the chat. So thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Navy. Oh, you're heading just, to Japan in three weeks. How exciting. <laughs> I just oh. want to mention the, the coffee here is amazing. Even by Australian standard. I forgot to mention that. 
<laughs> ah, yes, when Massa mentioned it yesterday, I said, Massa, you have to say that because that's very important for us. Yes, um, Kim wants very to good know, <laughs> Massa, Kim wants to know, is Oita family mm -hmm. friendly and is there a minimum age for onsen for children? Uh, not really. I mean, like, Oita is one of the biggest family uh, holiday destinations in Japan. There's so many theme parks, even like Hello Kitty theme, Sanrio, and Harmony Land is in Oita. Yeah, the Monkey Park, um, you know, aquarium, uh, all sorts of like children friendly um, activities and uh, experiences. And Masa, you mentioned that you go to the onsen with your son every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no minimum, minimum um, age. Yeah. Usually, like, you know, as long as as long as you know, you're healthy enough to go into your hot spring water, yeah, you can go from the from zero year old to <laughs> you know one hundred years old. Yeah. But, so, so do locals take babies they, into an onsen? Yes, yes, yes. They do. They do. Yeah. So unless unless yeah, the babies like you know can't control their urge to you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, go to the toilet and just call them. Go to the um, toilet. Yeah, that, I don't, yeah, 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 yeah. As long as they can go to the toilet and just control themselves, and you can go into onsen. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe from okay. one. Yeah. Um, amazing info, Sandra. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Karen, thank you, everybody, for joining us. There are a few places you, I'm not familiar with. Ah, Taishi. So, Taishi is actually. Um, in from from Kyushu. Oh really? I believe so. You're gonna. I think so. In in JTB in Auckland, Massa. Yeah. Oh, in Auckland. Wow. Yes, oh, from Fukuoka. So. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Aha, rivals. Uh, no, 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 friends. <laughs> um, Maria, you've written how busy does it get and do you need to book well in advance? Do you mean for accommodation in Oita or do you mean to use an onsen? So in terms of the steam bath, Massa, you can't book that in advance, can you? No, uh, you just have to like right there and usually there's no waiting time or like just a few minutes. Uh, but there's like a waiting room and you can drink um, and like just wait in the waiting room but usually there's no waiting time so you don't have to book in advance um, and accommodation so if uh, I um, somebody said to me once Japan rewards people who book early and I think that's 100% true so if you have clients that are planning to go to Japan the earlier they can book the nicer their accommodation will be um, Ume Hibiki which is one of the places that I mentioned which is really beautiful that books out mm -hmm quite a long way in advance, particularly during the busy periods. So um, you can still, you tell me, Matthew, you can still get accommodation last minute. It's just not going to be as good, is it? Or as much choice? Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, you're right. Um, you know, earlier is better, but like some ryokans, like a Japanese style inns, they open up uh, booking six months ahead. Yeah. So if you want to book, uh, fine advanced. Some accommodations don't accept your um, uh, inquiry. Yeah, so you've got to just uh, know like when exactly they're going to start taking bookings. Um, and if it's like an international brand like Intercontinental Beppu, yeah, they're going to you know receive bookings from like fine advance. So yeah, it depends on the type of accommodation, but it's surely like earlier is better. So it's kind of like really popular destination for both domestic and international, especially from Asia. Yeah. And when would you say it's busiest in Oita across the whole region? What are the, uh, the say, which months? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like all the domestic Japanese holidays, yeah, are the busiest because all the old people, families, like they love to come here and enjoy onsen. So I would say like New Year time um, from the end of December to beginning of November. Uh, also Golden Week, the first week of March, uh, May, sorry first of week of May, ending summer vacation uh, in August. Yeah, it's like the middle of August. There's our uh, Auburn holidays, the 13th to 15th, that kind of thing. They're like the busiest time. 
So even though time, it's yeah. summer in August and mm-hmm. it's not somewhere yep. where we would think to go to, it's really busy with <laughs> Japanese tourists. Yes, as I told you, there are a lot of like family friendly um, facilities. Yeah, so like they love to take their um, kids and to go to those uh, facilities. And at the end of the day, they like enjoying onsen, even in summer. It's still busy, really busy. Yeah. Yeah, fabulous. Um, Yukari is from, uh, from Auckland, JCB, uh, and from Fukuoka too. So thank you for joining us. Did anybody have any further questions? And it doesn't just have to relate to what we said, it could be anything in Japan. So. No. Um, are the kids engage are their kids' engagement activities to make it family friendly? So hands-on experiences matter for families. So you've mentioned the Hello Kitty theme park. There's another uh, yep. larger amusement park as well. Maybe um yep. Samuel, there is um a monkey park which I don't tend to um recommend to Australians. It's a little even though it's natural, it's a little bit contrived in that they feed the monkeys and then they come down from the mountains. They also do tricks. Is that right, Massa? Yes, they do. So, maybe. Um, so very yeah. popular with kids, but um, yeah, yeah. not so much with adults because it doesn't seem like it, it's an authentic experience. It seems a little bit contrived. What, what other activities are there for children to enjoy, Massa? I would say like Beckman ropeway, you know, um, the ropeway, the cable car takes you up to the Mount, um, Mount Surumi. That might be a really good um, activity uh, for children. Like, especially my son really loves it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the Beckman ropeway, definitely uh, one of them. And there's there are some forest adventures. It's like, uh, you know, uh, the French originated um, forest like park, basically. Like a zip wires and stuff like that, yeah, exist in the middle um, between Benpu and Yufuin, and also there's one in Hita as well, yeah. So a lot of like you know, uh, places for kids to go. And uh, my favorite one is in Lake Shidaka, uh, which is located somewhere in the bit somewhere between Yufuin and Benpu. You can uh, try the you know duck, not duck, yeah, duck boats <laughs> in the lake, yeah. Maybe that's something you can really do anywhere, but uh, you can see amazing scenery of like both um, volcanoes, Mount Surumi and Mount Yufu in sight. So yeah, it's gorgeous. Even even for me, it's a really good experience. Yeah. Um, for me, so one thing that I would do if I was taking my family to Uita, I would go down to Saiki, which is where I mentioned before they have this most amazing seafood because my son loves sushi. And every time I go to a sushi restaurant, it, it costs me a fortune because he just eats so much. Um, whereas they have huge sushi, really high quality, absolutely amazing, but very inexpensive. So that's somewhere I would definitely put on the list for my family to visit. The other I, thing I um, had a sushi, I had sushi in Australia, a third the price. <laughs> a third of the price yeah. of what you get in Australia. Yeah, a third wow. of the price. Yeah, yeah, and much, sorry, yeah, it, it tastes really good. Yeah. Yeah, and then would be um, going to Kitsuki Castle Town where they get dressed up in kimono, which would be a really fun experience for them as well. Uh, we've had no more questions come through, Massa, so perhaps we might wrap this up. It's um, yes, half perfect. past one. Yeah. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. We hope you have learned a lot, but also seen a lot and and are keen to send your clients and also go to the Oita Prefect to yourself. Thanks, Diana. Yes. Have a lovely afternoon, everybody. Bye, Massa. Thanks for Have joining lovely us. Lovely afternoon. Looking forward Thanks, to seeing Samuel. you Thanks, in person. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gary. Bye.